And a good midday Thursday, Roger Hill, Velcro Weather Hazards Outlook. Big picture, a couple things to get off the, uh, right off from the start. You're looking at Tropical Storm Alberta. It's made an impact, uh, came across the uh, eastern Mexican coast, heading just about due west. We'll dump off the Pacific. I don't see any redevelopment thereafter, though. And we have uh, this uh, depression, uh, Invest uh, number 92. Uh, this is a not very well organized system that is going to spread a lot of rainfall into northern parts of Florida, and South Carolina, uh, Georgia. And uh, you can see that its track here is just going to kind of lollygag down here in the southeast United States. This particular area does not need any rainfall, but uh, we're going to get more. Now, across the country, what we're looking at here is what you can see. The main batch of moisture kind of cuts off. Some of that peels off of uh, the remnants of Tropical Storm Alberto, pushes up into the uh, upper plains Midwest, and then comes back at it, circulating around kind of this Bermuda High. And as it does so, it's going to set up kind of an elongated frontal boundary with some pretty good moisture that's uh, going to trigger shower and thunderstorm activity just about every day. And what ends up happening is the frontal system does sag a little bit to the south of our region on by the time we get into Friday night, Saturday. And then it comes back as a warm front on Sunday, and it continues into probably Monday. Thereafter, along about Tuesday, we're looking at a much better day. In fact, the only project weather day that I see is dry. So heads up Tuesday next week. Let's check the models. European on the left, we have the Canadian gem on the right. And you can see that precipitation patterns by 18Z or 2 o'clock this afternoon. They're starting to perk up just a little bit. And that is what we're thinking here. And you can see uh, shower and thunderstorm activity, mostly in northern areas uh, into this evening. However, I feel southern areas can see some of the stronger thunderstorms, mainly central and southern areas. And uh, this continues to be a pretty much a daily pattern here. Friday, we're looking at more of the same. Note, northern areas now are not seeing quite as much shower and thunderstorm activity, so the focus will have pushed a little bit further to the south. And uh, by the time we get into uh, basically Friday night into Saturday, things drop off. And then we can see this frontal boundary again reactivate and trigger on Saturday and then push it northeastward as a warm front. And this is valid 12Z Sunday, so that'd be 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. So we get a little bit of a breather in the morning hours on Sunday. And then we're back into more shower and thunderstorm activity. That lingers into the night. Looks like it could be an active night uh, somewhere Sunday night into the day on Monday. In this area of low pressure, uh, that's going to be to our north. Uh, is sufficient to uh, continue to trigger more showers and thunderstorms. And so as that moves on, we can see more showers and storms in the forecast through about 8 o'clock on Tuesday. Then eventually things do wind down. And finally, and finally, we have an area of higher pressure building in, as you can see here. A uh, pretty good match here with the Canadian model. feel fairly confident at that point by Tuesday. We're looking at the better project weather day. Thereafter, we could see another day that may, uh, you could get two days in a row here, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So a lot of work needs to be done for maintenance and whatnot for the summer. Uh, these might be the two best days coming. So this is valid 12Z Tuesday, 8 o'clock in the morning. And then this is uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We're looking at uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. And then we have more storms to work on in. But look at this magnificent area of higher pressure here. And well beyond the period, we could see a little bit of a break in the action, much lower dew points, and maybe some decent amounts of sunshine stringing quite a few days together. That's well around the corner, however. GFS Ensemble centered on the Montpelier uh, grid. You can see today's a, a pretty good day. Uh, shower and thunderstorm activity, fairly significant. And then just on a daily diet, and that continues as far as the eye can see. This could be, uh, as we get into basically uh, Tuesday of next week, but uh, we're back into more showers and storms thereafter. And um, the total QPF looks like this. It's uh, fairly healthy, uh, roughly about two inches total. Now the blue line here is the GFS deterministic, so it's indicating about an inch of rainfall. And you can see it step ladders every day and so on and so forth. Looking at uh, some of the other indicators here, uh, dew point temperatures way up there, very very um, sultry conditions, oppressive dew points today around 70. It could even hit uh, maybe a little warmer than that. And then we start to see a little bit of these uh, up and down kind of motion here. This would be during the nighttime, but it goes back up. It looks like uh, 
continuing into uh, Friday and then uh, a drop off and then so on and so forth. But the big drop off is really going to be notable uh, a little further down the road. Looking at precipitable water, that's a really good indicator here. So we max out today, a little bit of a dip, come back a little bit, and then really do a drop off. And this is going to be for basically a lot around Monday night, Tuesday or so. And that lowers those uh, precipitable water metrics as well as dew point temperatures and whatnot. And that finally ends uh, the more persistent shower and thunderstorm activity and also cools things off just a little bit. So getting back to the current conditions today, we're looking at some pretty high capes. Um, it could be up around 2,000. And then a significant drop off, things stabilize, and then we do it over again, and we do it pretty much every day. The more significant uh, metric here is uh, cape over shear. And uh, today's uh, winds 25 to 30 knots of shear, so not a huge deal. In fact, even drops off later. And then it starts to make a rise during the day tomorrow on Friday as we have a little bit stronger uh, mid-level jet and uh, this continues around 40 knots and that could be significant. We could see more severe weather potential here. We have high capes today, more of a pulsy kind of type thunderstorm, damaging wind kind of deal. And then uh, we have more organization to maybe some bow echoes and some lines and whatnot to deal with. It is the time of the year for this to take place, so there's no doubt about it. And we're looking at pretty much all rain. Of Weather Prediction Center, seven day total accumulated rainfall. So the purple here is uh, two inches, and you're looking at about 1.5 here in the brown. So we're going to be under the gun here with the storm track uh, right along this particular area, and that verifies very well with the European as well. There's our two meter temperature anomalies. You can see we're way above normal. The areas that are seeing the temperatures that are most different from climatology are to the north and east of our region into the Canadian Maritimes. And there's notable temperatures in the 90s all the way up into Labrador. That's just insane. Moss temperature um, anomalies weighted uh, running about uh, three degrees above normal to neutral to the north and east of us over the next five days future projection and then uh, three days later we're looking at uh, temperatures warming up just a little bit three to six degrees with that neutral area pretty much uh, erased. No threats to our region we hit, this is the tropical depression and uh, this is Alberta which is now inland. We have another system that may try to do the same thing and make it into the southwestern portion of the Gulf of Mexico and almost a repeat so it could be a double whammy for these folks. Looking at the European Ensemble of Tropical Cyclone Development, this is our tropical depression, and uh, this is the tropical storm Alberto going into Mexico. So as we run the model, you can see that uh, there goes Alberto, here goes uh, the depression, and it basically just falls apart and lollygags. Here comes the second system that tries to follow Alberto again. Double whammy, again, heavy-duty rainfall and flooding. Uh, but nothing uh, to worry about otherwise. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Very strong Azores high, trying to build in with the Bermuda high, and that flow is basically around like this. And that's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.